Okay, guys, welcome to a brand new episode of Wrestling Slam, the podcast brought to you by Manscaped.com. Don't forget to check out the popular and in-demand 4.0 package. And as always, guys, we have that promo code. It's Wrestle Slam. So do type that into the promo code. Get 20% off their package. It's incredible. And it's, you know, it's, it was 8 million balls many months ago. I'm sure it's 10 million balls now. They have to change that little tagline. So it's at 10, 11, 12 million balls. Um, you know, some people might only have one testicle. You know, that's the case for a lot of people. It depends if you've got. It depends if you've big balls like the Miz. You might need more. You might need more. Some people might have three testicles. You know, some might have four. Some might have one, two. So look, everybody, you're looked after via Manscaped.com. So guys, we're gonna go straight into it. Look, Raw was interesting. I think you know, in all fairness, teams have really kind of gone on the up for WWE. I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of enjoying it. Um, SmackDown has been good. Raw has been good. A lot of kind of changes, a lot of returns, a lot of stuff happening. But we're going to go straight into Raw. Uh, George, what was your thoughts on Monday Night Raw? Look, it's fresh. There was a few things happened. There's talks Kevin Owen was going to make an appearance at NXT. Uh, Bobby Lashley, Brock Lesnar absolutely fucking each other up. It's no one knows for Crown Jewel that match is going to happen. Um, you know, there was many returns in, in prior days and stuff. But look, what was your thoughts on Raw, first of all, uh, on Monday? Uh, I thought it was one of the best shows of the year. Um, to open up the way they did with Bobby Lashley halfway through a promo, just straight off the bat was was brilliant because we weren't you know, there was no entrance we weren't waiting around to see what was happening. We just straight into it. Brock came out, they went at it, and the pull apart and him putting them through a table. Everything was just perfect to set up the feud. Like you know, made, made Bobby feel like a real monster. Like you know, nobody does that to Brock Lesnar. That's that's Brock Brock stick. He put he he annihilates people and walks off into the sunset. But I'm definitely hyped for this match. You know, we wanted this match for years and we got it already this year uh, when Bobby beat Brock. So Brock's obviously due a win. Maybe we'll get a trilogy at WrestleMania because, you know, maybe Brock won't have a... Oh, I'm hoping Brock won't have a title match at WrestleMania. So this might be, you know, a way of cementing that trilogy and having the rubber match. Maybe there'll be one all going into it. Um, but I, overall, like, considering Triple H wasn't... You know, backstage on Gorilla, like he may have been controlling things from home on his phone, but Road Dog was in charge last night, so everything ran pretty fucking smooth. And you know, it ended hot as well with uh, Mustafa Ali coming out and attacking Seth Rollins as well. And you know, he was closing the show like Mustafa Ali. I can imagine six months ago saying, "Ah, oh, he'll he'll be closing the show like we're on the night Raw." Like brilliant. I, I hope they do push him properly though. He he's a talented wrestler. He needed that, and like. Phil, we have to mention Brock Lesnar made a shock return. In my opinion, that was a, like, you know, he we thought he was gone. You know, he had a massive pay-per-view and look into the sunset, as Jarrah says. Brock could have come back and it could have shocked us all a bit, didn't it? That Raw uh, oh, two okay. weeks ago was fucking mad. It was quality. And again, like Jarrah said, like, they could have, this is the hottest way you could start off the show. I just wish that they continued it through the night. Um, a few more brawls would have been good. Mm. Uh, scattered throughout the whole show. Um, but there's a lot to be excited about with this show from last night. Yeah. Um, Elias is back. The whole thing with dam- damage control are slowly creeping back up because they were kind of, I don't know, I was lingering a little bit for a few weeks. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah. Bailey, Bianca, and is that for the belt? Or did you, they just said it was one, one on one? Is Bailey, it official? Bianca. I think they had as a graphic as they made the match Bailey versus Bianca. For Crown Jewel, no stick matches next week. Raw, oh, yeah, well, it's not yeah. in Saudi Arabia, no, no, there's no match yet for the Saudi Arabia. Yeah, three matches um, confirmed for that so far. Yeah, so or uh, JBL obviously with Corbin. Well, I'm very interested to see where that goes. And they also made sense of it by saying they traded him. Um, genius which is good. to set up the feud of Mania, which is good. Ray versus Dominic, Pops versus Son, it's going to be good. Um, Matt, it's probably fair to say, look, since Triple H has taken over, since it's been chopping and changing, it seems to be a good balance there at the moment. Storylines are kind of more invested. Um, names are returning back to normal. We're seeing some good matches. We're seeing some good backstage promos. It's a good time to be alive, isn't it? Uh, I mean, it's always been a good time to be alive now, Joe. You need to take everything in, like, you need to keep moving, like, especially if you're a wrestling fan. But, uh, no, if if you're someone who got frozen in time and still thinking of last year, thinking, oh, WWE's gone to shite and AEW is doing so good. What's going on now? Then it's going to be awkward as pain. Well, still happening, except the opposite now. But uh, no, I'm just happy that Triple H literally knows what he's doing. He's pretty much cleaning up 
every mess that made Raw like unwatchable. And we're finally gonna get pay per view matches that are not just randomly put together for no build, just last minute like crammy and like uh, all right, this fella's facing this fella, this one's facing this one. They actually will each match feel like they have a legit huge storyline. So uh, there's no breaks in between. It's like you really are glued to Raw. See what happens. Like so, Triple H, he's some man. What can I say? Whenever when we found out that he's taking over creative control. It was like so many fantasy bookings and fantasy, like who's going to come back uh, to WWE. And they are coming back, all the Triple H's favorites. Yeah. Uh, there's there's, one, or, there's one or two more on the way back as well, I was reading today. Yeah. Heard about what that. rumors did you get, Phil? Sorry, no. Um, one of them is possibly Taya Valkyrie. Okay. Um, they've read, they've, it's either her or else they're going to give the name to Sarah Logan. Yeah, and there was a mention, I think Joe mentioned Aoife Valkyrie as well, our own, Dublin own, Maybe. potentially. She's still under contract. I know. It's, I don't know if she's still injured or what, but she's NXT, definitely still NXT under Europe, contract. I'd say. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. It's, as you say, look, we, we, we were lucky to get Elias back. Obviously, he had a little, uh, a little kind of, uh, I suppose, a bromance with Matt Riddle, which was good. Um, obviously, AJ Styles is, is hot. I think his stock is going back up. Um, Seth Rollins guy is just fucking hell. The guy is awesome. I think he's one of the hardest workers in the game. Um, Dexter being creepy as fuck as always. That's why we love him. He's the biggest creep ever. Um, absolute legend, you know. So like for me, Raw definitely this week was was top notch again. Last week it would have been hard to top last week though. I think I think you know like this week was good, but very hard to top the week before. Would I have right to say that? It's on it's on par anyway because the structure yeah. the structure of the shows is there. Well, I'm, 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 loving, yeah. I'm loving the judgment day like since since everything's changed like they were shit before like but it's starting to really grow and then Dominic is starting to come into his own now as a heel like it's starting to, he's starting to get used to being being that way like you know he can be a prick and just get you know run with it be you know be yourself but be a prick at the same time like so exactly. he, seems to be, he seems to be growing yeah. Yeah, that, 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 sorry sorry about yeah I was just gonna say look it's funny you mentioned judgment day um, Look, guys, I'm going to be real at the moment if Dominic listening. Look, Dominic, you're doing good in Judgment Day, but you can't just join this group and think like, oh, this group is class. This group is... Sorry, hold on, give me a minute. <laughs> anyway, you can't keep saying that, oh, yeah, this group looks class. I'm going to go join them. Do you just, like, go off and join them and you brag about it on Twitter? It's not healthy, all right? I know this from experience, all right? So just keep that in mind, yeah? Anyway, go on. <laughs> Save yours. Um, yeah, look, I, I, I'd be right to say, look, you know, obviously, I, I'm a sucker for wrestling teams. Like, I've often been at home and I'd say this numerous podcasts. So I listen to Roman Reigns' team, and the mm-hmm. missus would say, like, What the fuck are you doing? You've watched that 10 times in a row, like, you know, but it's just something in my brain that lacks, and I love watching teams. But lads, that judgment day entrance, it's fucking awesome. Like, you know, you look at iconic entrances like The Brood, or you look at like people like uh, even Roman Reigns, and like, you know what I mean. Uh, Chris Jericho, all these guys. That that to me is something that's really bent. Like if if I was in an arena, like sure, imagine that happened in Cardiff where you have you know the hot stock of no, like the place would fucking erupt. The way they walk yeah. to the ring, it's just pure gothic, you know, it's pure dark. And I think that's what they've really done. They, you know what I mean? Our imaginations are fucking gone wild because they're so good. And if they keep that going the way it should go, then you could have Finn as a champion. You could have yeah. Rhea Ripley as a champion. It absolutely. could be total fucking dominance, you know? They should. They absolutely yeah. should. I know it's going to take a while for it to happen, but, you know, they definitely should. There, There's an option there for them, you know, to go against the bloodline at some stage. Like, you know, they've got that dynamic. I don't know whether, you know, Damien Priest and Dominic would be, you know, a tag team to beat the Usos. Like, but, you know, having them in his corner, if Finn's going to go after Roman Reigns again in the future or whoever the champion is in the future, you know, it's yeah. perfect. For, you know, there was rumours a few weeks ago that Finn was going to get a big push, so, you know, why not? Like, if he went out and attacked Roman, that would be no surprise. I know a lot of different brands, but just saying it happened because like, he's got two belts. So, well, Roman's Roman, on both shows. Yeah, so, like, he attacks Roman. There won't, there won't be one fan surprised. Won't well, be they one need fan. something. They need to start, you know, I, I know they've got Crown Jewel, like, but they're going to have to start building up this fucking War Games yeah. match as well, so then they figure out who's going to be in it. Yeah, yeah, and there, there, I get another rumor I heard is that there's going to be a mystery woman involved. I have no idea who it's going to be. 
yeah. Naomi and the bloodline against uh, Judgment Day then. Yeah, that'd be epic. Perfect. Yeah, that would be perfect. That would be the perfect combo. Naomi going there, you know, because I think it's the the one thing. Like Sammy is a fucking a jewel. Like none of us thought it would work, but look at it. It's the best thing ever, right? I think Roman loves it. Paul Heyman, no doubt, when he comes back to Ireland and he does a show, he's going to talk about Sammy. That's going to be a topic. Sammy in the bloodline. It's fucking epic. The thing about him as well, he's not allowed to go to Saudi, so they can't progress it there. Well, yeah. Yeah, unless he makes a camo, he might do a camo or something. Do you know? Oh, he's not allowed. No, no. no, but on the on the screen, no. Uh, I no. don't know. No. I don't know. Completely rolled off. Won't so. even be mentioned on commentary, I'd say. Yeah, like it's to do with his religion and stuff like that. They're they're yeah, against. No. They're against I us. I completely understand. Not like Roman will need him against Logan Paul. I think Jake Paul's gonna go to hate Terry anyway, and that's sure without a doubt. I don't know. Does he have to? I mean, like, uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying like oh, they don't need him, but do we need Jake Paul? <laughs> just I think off. the I think the Saudi prince wants him there. Well, it's there just... was a rumor that uh, Theory may have to defend his, his his briefcase in Saudi Arabia against like Johnny Gargano and somebody else in a triple threat. Okay. I've seen yeah. that floating around last week. Is he is he doomed, Austin Terry? Is it just a case Triple H doesn't want it? it? He looks like he's losing all the matches. You know it's. What what's the like? Is there an outcome of look? He actually cashes in and wins the fucking belt, you know? Shocks us all, or is it just bye bye? Apparently, the rumor is he has heat, and I don't know what heat it is. I can't I figure it out. Like, I just know that he has some sort of heat on him. There's there's no doubt about it though. He's gifted. There's not like I'm not gonna say he's not. He's fucking. Well, he's talented. Like, but I I get very... the, I get the impression as well that he's a. I don't want to be swearing and stuff, but he's not a nice person. Time will tell. He's gone. Well, he's gone way down the pecking order since everybody started coming back. Like, you know, the amount of people and, you know, Cody Rhodes is due to come back and he's going to be high up the pecking order as well. Like, so, you know, how do you have Theory as your champion? The only you know. thing that's going to save him is when he beats John Cena at WrestleMania. I, I can see Theory losing uh, the Money in the Bank briefcase to Johnny Gargano. I can actually see Johnny actually cashing it in um, and actually trying and put, turning back into no. All heart, no soul, Gargano. I know that's not going to happen, but I think that's the first person I could think of to win the Money in the Bank. Yeah, I think. Is, is nothing with it. I think Terry's in big trouble until WrestleMania. Yeah, there's nothing for him. Time will tell. Interesting the bet there between the team. It is interesting to see what will happen to Austin Terry. Um, so guys, I wanted to touch base on something quickly because look, I love to check in on all our wrestling websites around the world and. There was a little rumour put to The Rock that maybe The Rock was interested in buying, purchasing WWE. Now, I would not put it past him. The man is probably worth fucking, at this stage, probably close to a billion. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's made five, six hundred million in, in the last couple of years. And look, he's got dibs and everything. He's got his tequila business. There's, there's many, many franchises that he's got in mind. But is that something that would surprise you, Phil, if The Rock did buy WWE, it probably wouldn't be a surprise. No, not really. I think I think in the next few years he's going to want to get out of the sure like he's what is he now? 52? 50. I don't think 51. he can do these action films forever. So there's gotta be some sort of out somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So like, it wouldn't surprise me if he joined if he decided that he wants to buy it. Yeah, like the highest grossing actor currently as we speak, he's the highest salary imaginable, yeah. probably of all time when it comes to relevant pairs days now, but Jor, is this something you could see? Obviously, he purchased um, the XFL and mm -hmm. we, we don't know what he's going to do there, but look, he's obviously got a good business brain. He can pretty much turn anything to gold. Do you reckon this could happen? Is this something that's building momentum or is it just a case? Look, bullshit rumors. Yeah, never, never say never in, in the wrestling industry, you know. Uh, he's, he's born into the business. He has, you know, one of the families of of the wrestling industry, if you go back far enough, like it's they've been involved in it for so long. So, you know, like Phil said, you know, eventually he's going to stop doing action films and want to settle down. Well, not settle down, but you know, take a foot off the gas and just you know maybe invest his money in something. So, why not invest in a wrestling company? He's got, like you said, he's got fucking probably ten companies on the go at the moment where he's, you know, executive or managing or director or something of them, and he's invested in all them. So, why not invest in a wrestling company? I don't think he'll invest in any other company, so why not? Yeah. Matt, it's probably fair to say we could all trust The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. Look, he's one of the greatest workers of all time in the company. Definitely one of the greatest top five. You know, people would say top three. 
um, for entertainment purposes. And look, a good wrestler, and obviously he made a comeback many times and looked fucking a million bucks. But if he was to take over, Matt, you reckon it'd be a good thing? Obviously, look, you'll keep people in, in place. But if The Rock was the owner, so he, he made that big bid, you know, a couple of billion, whatever it's worth, is, is it a good thing if it does happen? I think it'd be a great thing if that actually happens. Um, I know we said never, I was said never, but like, he's like you said, he has a good business mind. Like, but like, uh, if he is going to take over WWE, that means, you know, like he said, we're not going to see him in much action films. We're not going to see him like in much like film work. I, I can see him actually being 100% devoted to WWE. He's still a fan up to this day. And, you know, he's not going to like make any major changes. He's, he knows Triple H, he knows Stephanie. Uh, he knows the what the roster can be like. So, and this will get more people interested. I mean, it's obvious non-wrestling fans know who The Rock is, knows what he started off with. That's going to get more people actually invested with WWE. That's going to boost up the viewership a little bit. And then, uh, and that'll actually just prove that The Rock is a good businessman. Like He's not just a, um, a worldwide uh, name that everyone knows. He, he is, he is legitimate, knows, what what he can do behind the scenes like so i i'm down for it definitely definitely though guys don't forget we will have a midweek show so we will talk about nxt halloween havoc on that midweek show um it's fair that deserves a show itself look it's a great card uh six matches to be announced and i do believe a lot will change on that card so do stay tuned and uh, we will have that on the midweek show among all elite wrestling now i'm going to talk about all elite wrestling quickly guys uh, chris jericho has extended his contract um, a surprise to some people and not so much of a surprise to many others. Not a surprise to me because, look, I think he likes it there. I think he's got a creative run. I think they're good to him. Um, and, you know, he's just that guy that, like, you know what I mean? He's kind of easily pleased, I suppose, if there's money and, you know, teams are on his terms. But, Joe, what's your thoughts on Jericho signing an extended contract with uh, All Elite Wrestling? Is that good for business? Is it good for him? Good for everyone else? Yeah, well, it's definitely good for AEW because, you know, they just recently signed uh, Moxley to an extended deal. So, you know, they're the locker room they're the locker room leaders for AEW are Jericho and Moxley and, you know, Brian Dinesen to a point. Like, so they need to lock them boys down to keep things under control backstage because it's clear to see that Tony doesn't have control of the locker room. He has control of what goes on TV, but when it comes to backstage politics, he's just not, he's too much of a fan of the, you know, the talent. To actually control them, he's too. He wants to be their friend. So having Jericho and Moxley there controlling the egos backstage is bestly, you know, what they need. And I, I could see Jericho staying there for even longer. Like you know, as long as AEW's around, I could see Jericho staying there. Like he's, you know, he's able to do everything. He's able to tour with Fozzy. He can do his podcast. He can do everything outside of wrestling, and you know, appear in some crappy horror films as well. And <laughs> you know, he's a. Uh, He's he's a legend, like he's you know one of the greatest of all times. Like, and I still think his relationship with WWE will still allow him to be in the Hall of Fame while he's in AEW. I think he's got that that mentality you now where, where he can just you know, we all saw him on, on Broken Skull Sessions with Steve Austin. So I could see him being in the Hall of Fame while he's in AEW. It's the thing as well with him is he's fighting Dalton Castle tonight. Well, um, that's gonna be good. I like to yeah, I, like, he, I like to well his matches. In the last six weeks, have been the best of his AEW career. Like his match with Cesaro was outstanding. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then did, you, did you see the whole thing of Tony Khan wants to make a documentary about the politics backstage of AEW? Red Watcher. <laughs> Warner wants to. I don't think he had a choice. Oh, all right. I've you know, I seen it there today. I was reading about it. A friend of mine this week we were talking about Tony Khan, and he just shouted, said, Tony Khan, you mean the Michael Scott from the Office of Wrestling? And I was like, that looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I'd watch it, man. I tell you, that's that would be something that would be on fucking Dark Side of the Ring in a couple of years where fucking there was a punch thrown and Omega gets fucking suspended and punk fucking breaks, whatever, and uh, the young bucks shit themselves in the corner. It's gonna be interesting. It's it's uh, yeah, look, I'm looking forward to more details on that when it does come out because we know what could have happened, but we still don't know what fully happened. It's um it's encouraging news, Phil, that Jericho has extended. It's, um, as you said, I, I wonder who, it, it's good for all parties, I suppose, look, isn't it? But there's a lot of things in it as well. Like he's got a, he's is the executive producer or something now as well. He is, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And he's mentoring young, young fellas coming up. There's yeah. a lot of perks in that little contract he's gotten. There um, is. So three years, I reckon, is this, you reckon this will be the last three years of wrestling or is there more, more to come? No, he's done. He's after, done in three years. This. 
unless he does um, a Ric Flair and wrestles at 70 plus, you know. But yeah, I think I think Jericho has nothing to prove, you know. He's what is he, 50, no. 51? Yeah, he's yeah. Yeah, 54, 55. I, I think all wrestlers should retire at the age of 50, guys, you know. Not saying that they can't wrestle. I just think it's it's bow out when you're 50 or below, you know. It's get out of the game. Except yeah. except Sting. <laughs> yeah, Sting still Sting still fucking has it. He's he's incredible jumping off fucking balconies and all sorts of stuff. But um Matt, obviously, look, you're a massive Jericho fan. Is it is it good news that he's extended or were you hoping to see him back in, in WWE? I think it's good news. I agree with Joe and um, Bill. Uh, not just because, you know, it's going to be great to see him in the ring competing for the next three odd years. But, yeah, it's Tony Khan. He, I, he's completely fucking lost. Lads. He's completely lost. He needs someone to actually step in and, like, to, like, I wouldn't say, like, fix all of his problems, but, like, vent out, like, what's going on backstage, like, and actually will help him. But like we said, I think AEW just needs a locker room leader and Chris Jericho is that like like if you saw a while back there was a like video of after a press conference of Tony Khan and Chris and you know Chris was whispering something to Tony Khan he actually looked upset as in you can tell this fella cares about this company yeah so seeing him actually being for the next three years is definitely a smart move but mm-hmm. uh for for career wise I can still see him going up another three or even five years or so but if let's just say after his uh, ring round match uh, with Dawson tonight, if he just says I'm going to be retiring, it'd be upsetting. But he should be happy. He made some career. Like, I mean, like at, in his late forties, he went on and faced Kenny Omega, and that changed. That's how AEW came all uh, came to be. Like, so he is AEW. That if that makes sense, like it's like he was a WWE guy. We all know him. Then w, but after for that. WCW, but he should stay in AEW as long as he can. And yeah. WWE knows this, so he'll definitely be in the WWE Hall of Fame as well. Yeah. Uh, just, I love it. Just because I know that we're going to run out of time and stuff, I just want to get your thoughts on um, Hangman Page and Mox, which is which is happening tonight. I have I have a fucked up feeling. I don't know why. But when I hear Hangman, I don't know if he's going to lose the belt. There's something weird about M- this. But MGF has that case. I remember, remember he has that case. Yeah, I just couldn't yeah. see. I don't know. It's weird. I could see someone yeah. fucking win that belt tonight. I don't know why. MJF, he win it. Hangman's definitely not winning it, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Something's going to happen. It's got feelings, you know. It's it's with all the shit happening on Raw. I think they're going to try and make a statement, but I don't know if it's the case the belt changes tonight. You know, have they'll have to do something because not only are they competing against NXT, which is you know something WWE are pushing with all the talent, all the Raw and SmackDown talent they're putting on the card, but. Uh, on TBS, I think AEW on TBS tonight, and there's a playoff game uh, before it. And if yep. the playoff game runs late, then AEW is going to run late, and they could end up, you know, not being moved to another channel. So they're going to lose their audience. So they're going to have to do something major at the start of the show to keep everybody. Because if it does, the, the game, the the playoff game finishes on time, then they've got that lead in of like all the millions of people, and they just go straight on the AEW, and you know they have to start off the show with Moxley and. And Hangman, they start the show. Oh, wow. They keep that audience. I love it. Proper, proper fucking pressure backstage. Um, as I said, look, we'll have a midweek show, guys, so we'll talk about All Elite. We'll talk about um, NXT Halloween Havoc, which I'm looking forward to this weekend. Guys, I want to touch base quickly yet again. Rebel County Wrestling, RCW. Ah, shit. Here we go again, November 5th at the Kino Cork. Don't forget, the bells at 7 p.m. for all of us. Over 18s, uh, doors open at half six. But don't forget, guys, there is a kiddie, family-friendly show prior to that. So anyone that has kids that want to bring their kids, teenagers, you're more than welcome to come to that family-friendly show. That will be at the Kino. That will be in the afternoon. Check out Rebel County Wrestling, a.k.a. RCW, for all the latest info on that. Also, don't forget, at the end of the month, the 8th anniversary of OTT. It's going to be incredible. The team will be there. It's going to be mad. There's so many announcements. It's in Wolverhampton in England as well. Um, so many wrestlers that we're going to see. Obviously, Gang Grill will be in Dublin. Uh, Matt Cardona, many more surprises expected. The card is incredible. So do stay tuned for more details and results in due course throughout the weeks when it comes to that. Now, we have to mention quickly. What was I going to mention? Hmm. The Matt Fact. That's what I was going to mention. So, Matt Fact, what is your Matt Fact today live on the show? 
Right. Everyone ready for a mat fact? You ready, lads? Fuck, fucking Jesus Christ. <laughs> Still adding, like, lads cheering in the background, and then, yeah, Woo! mat fact. Mat fact. <laughs> I just looked at you. It was like, you just made some bland faces. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. But, uh, look, Bray Wyatt, he's still, we're still talking about him. He's still making his unreal return uh, to Extreme Rules. Just everything about that is just amazing. I would watch that a thousand times. But we all probably know the origin story of Bray Wyatt. Yo, besides the cult thing about Jake. But we all know that he started off in NXT, the reality show, as Husky Harris. Joined Nexus, and then he disappeared at the face of the earth. Actuality, he went back to developmental to work on his character uh, to come back with something fresh. Everyone thinks, yeah, that's how Bray Wyatt came by. No, nope, he had another character by the, name of Axel, by the name of Axel Mulligan. And oh. he only competed in one or two matches. It's a fan video on YouTube. Look it up. He faced against uh, Broderick Clare. His character was pretty much a mix between a Slipknot band member and mankind. He was wearing a Whoa. steel mask. He was moving around, uh, acting like a slasher killer from an eighty slasher film. And uh, we don't know how far it's going to take. But apparently, backstage said, "Yeah, try this character. Compete one match, one or two matches. Went back. They said, "Yeah, the character's not doing for you because you just everyone just sees just Husky Harris in a mask." Hmm. So went back to the drawing board, and then Bray Wyatt happened. The rest is history. So that was this. He had an extra character with the Rhodes character characters called Axel Mulligan, named after his grandfather, Black Jack Mulligan. So yeah, character that we never saw, only in that one YouTube fan video, Axel Mulligan. Uh, so that is this. That that was a bit of a fact. What a fact. Well, well like somebody link link the link that YouTube video on in the description below and let everybody watch it as well. Interesting. Bray Wyatt with a mask, and we know he has, he's at the fiend kind of fucking mask. It almost looks like like Jason the steel wants a steel mask. Mm, I never do that. Legit, never fucking do that. So that's telling you something. Interesting fact. Interesting fact. Just, speaking just of Bray Wyatt, just, just before we go, just fact. speaking of Bray there for a second, because I know we have like five minutes. What do you make of him breaking the fourth wall? Yeah, it's uh, interesting. Yeah, Love becoming it. himself. Absolutely. Give it a go. You yeah. never know. It, it could be like, you know, obviously they're going to try some sort of split personality thing where he's Bray the man and this thing with the mask is going to be his, you know, alter ego and it's going to control him and mm. eventually take over his himself or he's going to have to fight himself or some fucking shit's going to happen. Typical Bray shit, like. <laughs> Set himself on fire in real life yeah. in the ring. <laughs> fucking hell. Madness. Matt, what's your thoughts on, on Phil? Touch a good subject with Bray Wyatt Friday Night Smackdown. Obviously, he came out, you know, was it legit? Was it all an act? I feel like it was legit. I mean, there was like so many talks about him, like he's been through, going through a lot. You know, we're not going to get into details in the podcast, but we have an idea. And him just coming out being legit, like honest with himself. Uh, I don't think I have anything joke wise to say about that. I feel like that was him taking the time. Triple H. Uh, giving him time to like, just be yourself and we might even use this as a character uh, part of your road gallery of characters like we said um, and you know we, we can't expect the unexpected when it comes to Bray Wyatt that's all we said so I love it I don't know where we're going to see him now we'd still like to see the Wyatt 6 taking on the bloodline but uh, when it comes to Bray he, if he's put properly with anyone in the roster just, uh, with the, just one final thought, right on it. His first opponent is in a very tricky position. No, you could say that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Like whoever fights him first is in big trouble. Mm. That's true. Who's going to be the person? That's the question. That's that is the question. That is the question. That will determine what we can think and what we can dream of as the weeks and months come. And will he be part of Crown Jewel? Is the question. Time will tell. Um. Do. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if he doesn't compete again on, on until WrestleMania. Mm. Yeah. Bold statement. Bold statement. Maybe, maybe. How many months do we have? If anyone has a question, Five, six, about, months. six months. Has a problem with that run. 
<laughs> yeah, no, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see what does happen. Um, yet again, lots of rumors, lots of stuff happening in the world of wrestling. I want to quickly mention the talks uh, that Cody Rose is truly and well ahead of schedule on his return. Looking at yeah. the Royal Rumble or prior to that, but look to me, Royal Rumble coming out, getting the pop and taking that Rumble win will be fairly epic. I think it's what we all want. Bray Wyatt's back. We're still celebrating and rejoicing to that news. And uh, hopefully, hopefully he does have a match. But if he doesn't have a match, then you head a first from Phil Conley. Uh, from myself, Jerry, from Matt, from Jur, and from Phil, thank you very much for tuning in to WrestleSound, the podcast. Um, as you said, look, every week you all tune in, guys. So thank you very much. It is brought to you by Manscaped.com. So do check out the 4.0 package. And as always, we have that WrestleSlam promo code. So do use it. Do take advantage of it and make sure you purchase. Uh, we'll catch you for a midweek show. This show will go out Wednesday and a midweek show will go out probably Friday. So until then, God bless. Be safe. Thank you all from the WrestleSlam team. We'll catch you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye. See you guys. Salon.